Hello and welcome back. In this video we will work through uh, determining range, max height, and time in flight uh, for projectile motion in two dimensions uh, in the presence of a gravitational field. So again the idea here is that the only force acting on our object after it's been launched is a gravitational field and so our acceleration oops so our acceleration, we're going to work this out for, in general, not uh, with units. Uh, so our acceleration vector is a constant 0 minus g. So right, like, I've, like I mentioned, I'm keeping this just as g. That way we can change this depending if we're working uh, in meters per second or feet per second. We can change this around. So we have this constant acceleration on our object as it moves along its trajectory. It's been launched at an angle of alpha, and we'll assume alpha is between zero and pi over two. Uh, if it's not, you know, maybe if it's launched this way, well, we can switch around our axes and just um, and consider it like that. So it's safe to assume that we're being launched at an angle of alpha, and that's between zero and pi over two. That's above the horizontal, so here's our alpha here. So this would be, uh, for example, our initial velocity, our v naught vector, so initial velocity. And uh, we want to keep this as general as possible, right? So we have angle of alpha, that can be anything between 0 and pi over 2, and then we just have an initial speed of the magnitude of v naught. So what that means is that v naught itself, v naught, or uh, we might think of this as like v of 0, that's perfectly fine, v of 0 will be the vector v naught. And then, so here we want the horizontal velocity, and uh, that will come from cosine of alpha, right? Cosine of alpha will be this one. If we break down this, this v naught vector of cosine alpha, and then, uh, or v naught cosine alpha, and then v naught sine alpha for the y component, right? So just some basic trigonometry. So this will be v naught cosine alpha, and in the y direction, we'll have v naught sine alpha. So this is our initial velocity, which means we should be able to recover now given an initial position. And for this problem, we're going to assume that the object begins at the origin. So uh, I'll say this here and then I'll remind us again sort of at the end. This uh, formula that we're going to develop for range, time of flight, maximum height has to, uh, we, we have to have these assumptions, right? If these assumptions aren't true, then the formulas we're going to develop uh, will also not be true. They'll, they won't follow from it. So our assumptions are that we're starting at 0, 0, and we're just being launched at an angle of alpha above the horizontal with this initial speed. So anything that fits this bill, our formulas will work for. All right, so I think first step, let's recover uh, the velocity v of t. So rather than just v naught, or v of zero, let's find v of t in general. For that, I welcome you to go back to uh, the previous video or look at your notes um, for the formula for v of t given our acceleration, right? That has an initial velocity. Remember, uh, with th those formulas, we had v naught was, we let it be u naught v naught for our initial velocity. Um, and here our initial velocities are v naught cosine alpha and v naught sine alpha. So substituting those in for u naught v naught will yield uh, the velocity equation. And so what we should get for this, or we can just kind of think through it, right? Horizontal velocity, this is my uh, initial velocity. There's no forces acting on it horizontally, and so this should just be v naught cosine alpha times time. That's my horizontal velocity. And then for vertical velocity, now there is a force acting vertically, uh, and so this will be my minus gt plus v naught sine alpha. So that'll be my vertical velocity. Great, and now we can integrate um, again to get to position. So r of t, my position equation, will be, um, sorry, uh, v naught cosine alpha t, uh, why would my velocity, horizontal velocity, be growing here, right? Does that make sense that this should be growing? No. So that's one way I can tell that I messed up that equation a little bit. It should just be v naught cosine alpha. It should be a constant horizontal velocity, again, because my there's no forces acting in the horizontal direction. Uh, so r of t, then, here's my v naught cosine alpha t. Right, now that makes sense that horizontal distance should be increasing linearly. And then here I'll have my mi minus one half 
gt squared plus v naught sine alpha t plus my initial position, which is zero. And so here's my equations for, uh, or my equation for position vector valued function that describes the position of this object. Uh, this is good. Remember that uh, when we have a position function like this, this is my x of t, and this is my y of t. Okay, so let's find time and flight range and max height. Now, as we did this before, I was able to find range by first finding the time of flight. How long does it take to go from starting to ending? Uh, and then I plugged that into the x equation to get the range. Uh, so do you remember how we got the time and flight? Remember that time and flight, uh, it, right, we're looking at what time is this happening when it's hitting the ground here. So this will be when y of t is equal to 0. Uh, maybe I'll just use y of lowercase t, y of t equals zero there. And so if I set y of t equal to zero, that will give me uh, two solutions. One should be zero, and the other should be my time in flight. So let's start with that. All right, so for time in flight, remember we call this big T. I know that y of big T is equal to zero implies, so what's my y equation? That was my minus one half gt squared plus v naught sine alpha times t um, equal to zero. So I'm setting that equal to zero. I should have a big T here. You know what? I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to let this be little t. Sorry if that's uh, confusing. So let's solve this. I can pull a t out. I want to remind you not to divide by variables on both sides of an equation. This is going to be something that comes up later on in the class. Be very careful about dividing by a variable, and in general, don't do it. Rather than dividing by a variable, factor it and use the zero product property. Right? I know this equation is equal to, or this expression is equal to zero if. Uh, one of the factors is equal to zero. So this gives me two solutions, either t equals zero, or this whole bit here is equal to zero. So or one half minus one half gt plus v naught sine alpha is equal to zero. Uh, then this one gives me, so there's my t equals zero, that's my starting, that's not my time in flight, right? This is my where I started. Uh, and then let's solve this for t. Uh, let's see, I should get... Add that over, multiply by 2, 2, b naught sine alpha over g. That's my t, and so this is my time in flight. Big T, capital T, is 2, v naught sine alpha over g. So that's pretty cool. We have a formula for time in flight just based on initial velocity and angle of launch, uh, as well as gravitational acceleration. So that's pretty cool. That's my time in flight. Now I can use that to find my range. Right? Range is going to be x of time in flight. How far did I travel horizontally over this much time? So my x, let's remind ourselves what my x equation was. That was v naught cosine alpha times t. So here I'll get v naught cosine alpha times big T. So that's 2 v naught sine alpha over g. Let's bring this together. I end up with, it looks like, 2 v naught squared sine alpha cosine alpha all over g. And I'm going to clean this up just a little bit. This is an OK form, uh, but I can actually just have one trigonometric function here. 2 sine alpha cosine alpha. This is an important identity to remember. 2 sine alpha cosine alpha, well, that's sine of 2 alpha. It's our double angle identity. So this is really uh, v naught squared, magnitude of v naught squared, sine 2 alpha over gravity. Cool, so that is my range.
That's how far my object will travel just based on, again, initial velocity and angle of uh, launch. So that's pretty cool. Uh, what's my last one? My last one is max height. So how do we get a hold of max height? Remember, the idea was we want to figure out when my, my vertical velocity is equal to zero. So I want to find y prime of t. That's my vertical velocity. In fact, my vertical velocity is also, I could just look at my, uh, my velocity equation and take out and look at the vertical component of that. So this should be minus gt plus v naught sine alpha. Minus gt plus v naught sine of alpha. I want to know when that's equal to zero. So that gives me t, this implies t is equal to what? v naught sine alpha over g. So that's my max height, and then I want to plug that in for y. Um, so let's do y of v naught sine alpha over g. Right, this is where, or rather when, when max height occurs. And this will actually be what the maximum height is. So my y again, that was my minus one half g t squared. So, oh, this is a y, by the way, not a g. Kind of looks a little bit like a g. That's a y. Uh, g t squared, so that's my v naught sine alpha over g. And I'm squaring all that. This one have g t squared uh, plus v naught sine alpha times t. So this will be times v naught sine alpha over g. And let's go ahead and uh, simplify this as much as possible. So let's see. Of minus one half g times v naught squared sine squared alpha over g squared. So a g and the g squared is going to cancel end up with just g on the bottom. Uh, so what do I have here? I have minus v naught squared sine squared of alpha. I still have my one half, and I'll just have one g on the bottom, so over two g. Over here, it looks like I have, what, v naught squared, and then sine squared of alpha, all over g. Cool, we're almost done here. Uh, there's an easy way to simplify this. Notice that this quantity is twice this quantity. Or rather, this quantity is one half of this quantity, and it's being subtracted. Right, so think of it like what's one, one of these minus half of one of these, I just get half of one of those. And so what I get out here is V naught squared sine squared alpha over 2G. If you missed that line of reasoning that I just described there, another way to do this is just find a common denominator, multiply both uh, multiply top and bottom of this guy by 2 over 2. I'll get 2 V naught squared sine squared alpha minus V naught squared sine squared alpha. So that's just 1 V naught squared sine squared alpha over my 2G. So you could do this by, uh, you know, actually taking all the steps and finding common denominator. Uh, but regardless, we find that this, and this is my max so there we have range, time in flight, and max height in terms of initial velocity, my launch angle, and gravity. And that's all I need for these. So three beautiful expressions for these three quantities. Here's just a little summary slide for this. The other thing to notice was, um, maybe I should have pointed this out. Let me go back to max height for a second. So we sort of uncovered this from first principles, but one thing you might notice here is the time value. So when the max height occurs, this time value is actually one half. This is one half of my time in flight, which should make sense for parabolic motion. The max height occurs exactly between the two 
uh, roots of the parabola uh, will be max height. And that should be one half of the total amount of time, right? So my t was this. If I multiply by that by one half, I get the same value as when the max height occurred. Uh, so that is one over uh, one, uh, one half t. And so there we go, there's our equations. Now I'll remind you again, remember this will only work, this time of flight range max height. For example, we just looked, uh, we just worked through an example um, in a previous video where our initial position was not zero, zero. And so this range formula would not have worked. Uh, same with the max height, these would not have worked um, for that situation. This only works when we're starting at zero, zero. And, uh, right, lots of assumptions here, and when it's acted on only by the gravitational force, and it's traveling over horizontal ground. So if my ground is, say, slanted, maybe it's going downward, something like this, maybe if this is the ground, then when I launch my object with, with the same initial velocity in this, well, it's going gonna, it's gonna to intersect the ground at a later point. My range is going to be different, right? I can work out my range according to this formula would be right there, when in actuality it's going to go further than that because the ground is slanted down. So if we're in a situation like this, we'll have to sort of uh, change some initial uh, conditions uh, to, get, uh, to get the distance along the ground. So that'll be different there. Again, this just works under these assumptions. All right, that's it for this video. We'll explore more variations of this problem uh, in a later video. I'll see you there.